<laughs> okay. So here we are at our Premier Sir Rivers Trust. Um, just again giving you a wee update on what we're doing. Uh, we try and do this regularly, so um, one of our other videos that we're, we're preparing at the moment talks about a small micro hatchery um, that we're so here we are, we're in March now, 10th of March, and we've got trout eggs hatching. Uh, you'll see in this video plenty of albums swimming about, a uh, few eggs still to hatch and some problems. We've got fungus in some of the eggs. We're running two micro hatcheries this year that are fed from a burn and the fish will release themselves back to the burn. Uh, it's a hands-off type approach and it's not without problems. There's still problems with it. So the reason we're doing it in the other location, I think we've got another video coming from that one. Um, it's an area affected by conifer plantations and uh, granite sand and the burns in poor condition and this one this one's about this one's about trying to overcome the difficulties of mine water. So the problem in the, the starting plot burn we're here sat here in the hair shaw burn which is the, the burn we're using as a, a feed for our incubator sort of slash hatchery type. The problem with the hair shaw is we'll put some video footage in here. You can see from the forever's bed it's absolutely orange and any eggs that go into that are dyed and we've proven so far that they do die when we do that. And the starting cloth that is not the hair cloth. On the starting cloth. Oh, right. I thought I'd get it right because we're trying. Listen, we're not filmmakers. Um, we're, no. nothing, we're nothing other than fishery biologists and we're doing our best here but we feel it's important to share this. So we make mistakes, we will get better at this but it's the, the hit or miss. Sometimes. So the starting pot burn, as we've proven early on in the year with egg box trials, we get 100% mortality when those eggs are left in the gravel there. So any egg, any spawning fish is basically wasting its time, which is the whole point of purpose of this uh, micro incubator up here, is that we're not wanting to waste those eggs. This is a population of that are isolated from the river air. And so it's put in the, the drone footage, we'll see a dam. So there's no come and go between the river system and the lock system. So anything that comes from the lock up into the, the starting clock uh, is destined for no success. 100% mortality. All the eggs fail and, and Strun and I went to pick the, egg, the, the fish out of the burn in, in November and we picked pairs. We didn't just indiscriminately pick fish, we picked pairs of fish that were about to spawn together. Uh, and, and that helps eliminate one of the problems of hatcheries, it overcomes the difficulty of the natural selection and man making choices for the fish. At least in this instance we try to pick fish that we're, we're going to spawn together. So sorry, carry on, you were telling me. Uh, so the problems arise because of the historic, the historic mining, the, the very iron rich upwelling that you get uh, as a result of that. Your typical conductivity across the airshore may fall sort of somewhere between 60 to 100. Um, put the conductivity meter in the starting clock fund and you're anywhere from 800 to 1000. Conductivity is a, a, a measure of the, the dissolved nutrients within the water. So, um, in this case it's iron that's a real problem. There are other things, but mainly it's iron. And it's this that causes the pet to end up competing together and basically creates an oxid, which means no oxygen conditions below the surface of that gravel. And as it's very clear, eggs need egg oxygen to survive, to grow and to develop. And you take that away, they're dead, so... We did an egg trial uh, and ran it from November till February. Just to check, uh, we've, we've done this before, but we wanted just to, to confirm uh, that the, the eggs are natural reproduction was failing uh, and when we open those egg boxes up it's 100% mortality in, in the, the egg boxes so that's the justification for this 
um, and you'll see what we do, we'll show you in this video what we've got, but we are getting problems, but you know, even if we lose three quarters of these eggs, this is a success because otherwise none of these fish, none of these eggs would have hatched, they would have all died in the gravel, so that's, that's the reasoning behind this. You can see the hair shot, the, the water quality looks pretty good, um, it's pretty clean and free from silt, but it's not totally free from silt. Um, there's a farm upstream and, you know, the sheep go through the burn and there's a bit of silt at least, but not too bad. It's a nice clean wee burn and the fish do spawn in it downstream of the cameras here. We've got a waterfall and that's the upper limit and it's only 50, 60 metres between that and the starting block for natural recruitment. So here we are in a, we're in March now, uh, 10th of March, something like that, and our eggs are hatching, pretty much hatched, most of them have hatched. We've had some losses here, it's linked to water quality I think, but you get that with any hatchery. Um, it's a very simple system, it's fed from the river um, via a tank, a holding tank to try and let the, sed the sediment settle out. And um, it's a very slow light, not too strong a feed in there. And an outfall here. So the flow through the tank is constant. And the fish have got a way out when they get to swim up stages. We'll take these screens off shortly once they're a bit once they're all hatched. Gave him a good rattle around the other day and everything just about is hatched. There's one or two eggs not hatched there in a couple layer with fungus. So we're going to, instead of holding on to these fish, you can see the silt in it. It's not a good situation with all the silt uh, coming down the river at every spate. So I think now's the time just to, we'll stock them. We don't want to hold on to them too long. And I think we've done all we can do just now. So time, time to finish and get rid of them. Right, another lovely day here in Paradise and Glenbuck. Snow. <laughs> Three, hands. four degrees. But a tray of album going out, putting them into an artificial red here that we've created. Strewn will just let them go there and give them a wee bit of shelter before they about the best we can do really, it's giving them a chance. Nothing up here is ideal, for all the burns affected by historic mining. But this is above, this is up near the viaduct, the viaduct's just around that corner. Um, so the best water quality we can get is up here and it should give them a wee chance to hopefully survive and thrive. They should drop back down into the loch as they get bigger and, and this burn can't cope with them or they can't cope with this burn. All right, we'll go on and try again a wee bit further up, stick a few more in and get done. So here we go again. We've got an artificial red in at our feet and we're gonna stick these few in here. Shouldn't dry out, so, but it's a wee bit of shelter from the main current. Probably a 150 fry or album going in there. the red and all good. Safe in the gravel. Move on to the, the next site. And we'll put them in there. That wee pile of stones here, just out off the edge of the current. Get them somewhere to go. And 
And that's a viaduct that you see in the distance there. The old railway line to the pits. It's all revolved around Glenbuck and Glenbuck Village, which was oh, a very famous village in uh, uh, Bill Shankly uh, originated here and the, the Glenbuck Cherry Pickers football team, a very famous uh, footballer went on to play for Liverpool for Bill Shankly went. Um, so it's a very famous wee village and it, it was demolished in the, the 90s to make way for the, the open cast that came. The estate here, the big house has been demolished years and years ago. The locks are artificial, but everything revolved around the estate and, and the lock at one point and the mine workings and the iron workings. Um, and we're left with this terrible legacy of industry, past industry. And, and not, not so long ago, though, from the, the, late, the, the early 1990s, the, the open cast mine went in and it hasn't helped it any less, put it that way. So, um, all the problems we see here are man-made, and that's why we intervene, nothing else. Uh, there's no future uh, prospect of having uh, any of this burn or the problems in this burn restored. Um, the, main, the Scottish Mine Restoration Trust spent a lot of money in memorials in the, the Glen Button Village, the Heritage Village here. They put nice wee seats in, they put uh, gates in, fencing in, memorials to Bill Shankly and to Glen Buck. And that's all very good, but everybody forgot about fish. Thankfully we didn't, and uh, we won't forget about fish. We'll keep coming back, and uh, we'll do the very best we can. But we need lights and support that we can get, and we are trying to find that support that's now to allow us to do more and more. So, worthwhile. Of our project. Enjoyable. The new Challenging. <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the big and spare aid. So that's the, that's the end of our wee project up here at Glenbuck and uh, it's been, been challenging. The weather's been a challenge it's been perfect, very wet. It's never stopped raining in three months. Um, pretty wet today, but we'll stop the eggs out that we, or the, the album out the hatch. Um, we'll get a count in the numbers later. But, we lost quite a few here because of water quality. That was kind of expected, maybe not as bad as... We maybe didn't expect just as many as we lost, but we did uh, expect some losses. Um, but everything we've reared has been a, a bonus, because every every um, egg in this burn at this point where we lifted the fish from, would have died. What do you think? I mean, it's, it's been one of those project's been nice to do, but it's not ideal, is it? It's not ideal, it's not. It's good. Our first port of call was always to improve habitat, not to jump to hatcheries and incubators, but in this instance there's no chance of sorting this out very quickly, uh, certainly beyond our means and funds. And speaking of funds, this has been a project all off the trust zone back, there's been absolutely no funding at all for it, and it's just because we don't want to see this population of fish lost, which could very quickly become. Yeah, so if you've liked what you've seen, I mean we're not we're not asking uh, we're trying to get funding to carry this on next year. But um, we've had no no cost recovery here at all and it, it is time consuming. We were out here and through the night collecting fish and how many days ago we've been here a lot. Um, but if you want to make a wee donation to the Trust to support this sort of work, possibly support next year's work, we'd appreciate it, we really would. Um, the Trust's charity and 
you know, if we don't have funding, we can't survive and we can't do projects like this. So, uh, yeah, I've got our webpage, you can do it there. You can join the trust there. I think it's only 15 or 16 pounds, I can't remember. I should know, but um, it's, uh, it's not a lot to join the trust, that helps us. Donate to the trust for this sort of work, that helps us. Um, and share the work that we do, let others know what we're doing. It's, it's not just about, we're not all fish, we're, we're about habitat, we're about everything to do with rivers and um, ecology. So, uh, next project might be water bowls, who knows? We just uh, we take it as we find it and we see a need and we, we do our best to, to help them intervene.